So we have commercialized this. We have been in the market for the last three and a half years now. We have over 100 units out there, uh, there in India, a private limited company. So we were looking at uh, ways, uh, mechanism to scale up, reach out to, especially in villages, and how, how we can go about it. Because we've designed it ideally for that, for low power, solar based treatment uh, solutions in that area. So uh, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you. My name is Vaishali Pai. I am an occupational therapist by profession and uh, I work with children with brain damage. Currently we are working with about 100 children, uh, 60 of them in Bangalore, the rest in rural areas, one uh, in Rajasthan and the other one in uh, North Karnataka, right? Um, my, my, I have two questions actually, sorry. You, you can answer any one of them. Uh, we talk in terms about, about impact. So I want to know, from, from my perspective, my definition of impact is very different from what other people might look at it at. You know, uh, uh, for, uh, most importantly, the funders might look at. It's not about, uh, so how many children started walking, or how many children started talking. My, my impact is much different. I, I calculate impact differently. So I would like to know, from my perspective, what should be the definition of impact? And uh, secondly, of course, uh, how do you get funds? What does, what do, <laughs> how, do you yeah. how, how do you get money? Yeah, finances. We, we have big dreams, don't give up. Not especially not because we don't have money. And uh, sustainability is not a question when it comes to my sector. Uh, we, we cannot work with children uh, as young as six months old and expect them to start producing uh, or giving back to society something. So uh, how does one? So, it's very difficult for us to even measure. I don't know if I skip that. How could you really measure each child's work? It's very difficult. There are children who have come with us for three or four years back. For us, the growth of the child is, there was a child, for example, who came, she was a vegetable. Today, she can communicate through eyes. And now she started saying one word. For us, that is the impact and that is the measurement growth that we have seen, but that we cannot put it in numbers. We, we can put it in parallels. So how do we really work? Representing Vishal and NGO, I am partnership with the Deshpande Foundation last year, this last year. Uh, with my experience, we are working with cooperatives uh, by involving nearly 4,000 families. And uh, we are also, uh, people have contributed more than 20 lakhs as a share component. And also we are raising funds in the cooperative through ESP, accounts, through Ali, through say, uh, this Pikmi and everything. But uh, uh, demand is a lot in the members to have a sustainable uh, livelihood uh, for their uh, economic uh, empowerment. So to meet out that in the present scenario, uh, too many microfinances, too many financial institutions are working in the area with a different uh, mode of approach. From 10 to easy, easy level also. We are giving, giving the training for them, free training for the empowerment. It's the uh, government jobs, it's complete examinations, and it's not for sector. But now we are building a blending for the sales of the food, cost of the city, and everything. It's a cost of the city. We fall short of funds. How to we took that? We can work with you. We have two organizations in the same domain. Mm -hmm. We don't mind adding 10 more. That's okay. Great. So whom to? Uh, 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 there's a one email called grants, G-A-R-N-T-S, at the red DF mail dot what you can write. I think that, uh, look, impact, as you said, that it is I word, you can stretch as much as possible. You can make a, a, a whole straight line. And you can add everything or delete everything. But uh, if you really see, if you understand the people who kind of uh, give money, they really would like to see the accountability of the money. And, and people understand that, like for example, agriculture, sometimes it takes three years before we see any result. Uh, suppose we take a health, malnutrition, almost like four years to really see the sum growth. I'm sure in your case also same. So those people who invest in those sectors, they have understanding that this is a long term, this takes time, and it has all sort of element. So I would encourage, get those people and don't worry about I personally feel it, numbers are good, but it's the emotional stories that are going to get your donors <coughs> engaged. Uh, and you know, there's a good example in Bombay. You might know Umi, uh, you know, and they do a lot of work there. They've been there for the last ten years, and a lot of what they get is really corporate philanthropy yep. when they go after that. 
Uh, and so, you know, having that emotional story, uh, because they are the ones who are going to invest for the long term. So, stimulable one is really tougher one, but your one is more uh, trying not to directly touch the heart. And, and I, I have a reason for asking this question okay. because DF had asked us this question. Oh. So, so, this so, I'm, so I'm, I'm asking so I'm, it back I'm to you. Back. That, you know, how do you want me to answer you? <laughs> yeah. So this is a simple, uh, simple thing we understand that these are the things take time and, and keep it as simple as possible. If you make more complex, then probably they'll they'll put off, and 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 that's the worst way to disconnect. Suppose I go to a, I mean, ask for a project over there. And there are some ten organizations who talk impact in numbers. We talk on stories. No, However, no. impactful, touching part. It no, doesn't is. matter. Doesn't matter. You will have to build a diversified funding model. Uh, from what you're doing, it's an emotionally driven funding model more than anything else. If you just go after one thing, it's going to be a tough thing. And like you said, <coughs> CSR now is going to be a crowded space. A lot of people are going to be there. And a lot of people are going to come with numbers because they're doing things that are on fire. But you've got to go where the emotions are strongest. And the emotions are strongest when you go to people, right? When you go and talk to people, you find people who might have, some, say, had the same kind of uh, issues in their family. They are the ones who are going to listen to you, and they are the ones who are going to answer to you much more than somebody in the corporate. So if I was looking at your funding model, I'd say, you know, look at three or four sources. Go and go where you can get some of that emotional attachment first, and then go into the other ones. The other ones will take a while to get there. But if you just focus on one thing and say, okay, yeah, you're right. CSR is now everyone's going to jump into CSR, right? And you're going to find a lot of people have been doing things for a long time, and they'll have a lot of data. And so, for you, data is not your strong suit. Your strong suit is your emotion. Don't worry about the demand. What is it? This is uh, uh, they set up a cooperative and then have a microfinance and livelihood at, at the thing. So there are tons of demand. That's not an issue. But the more important thing that how much demand you can manage it. So you have very nicely, wonderfully, in a very short span of time, you are able to capitalize the 20 lakh kind of, uh, uh, the people have contributed, that's like excellent and you should appreciate yourself and your team. And then see that journey from 20 to 40 to 60 rather than seeing that 20 to 5 crore problem. You can do it, there's no issue. But I would suggest there are a lot of partners who have gone through that. They have taken 5 years, you may take only 2 years to do that. But I think that uh, building the stronger organization is, is critical. If you have a stronger organization, those numbers will come. That's not an issue because you, you, you have a strong community grip, you know livelihood activity, etc. Et so I would suggest build your strong organization and then things will start uh, 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 working. So, so that's the, and it's a wonderful what, what you have done in the last one year. Sir, to your thing that, uh, like that the financial crisis will be all the time. There's no time, there's no crisis. So what I would suggest that activity is very good. You hire two, three fundraisers. Who are they? Hire the two, the way any company probably, he hired the sales guys to sell the machine. Similarly, you need a two, three people who can who can sell your product. Uh, either you can do or someone else can do, you can decide. But you need a person, uh, uh, we don't say the sales person in NGO, but we say a, a fundraiser. And, and that's an essential, very, very critical. And several times what happened that as a, as a head of the organization, we try to do all the time. But I would say you, you may have a lot of other things to do. It. So if you take this, probably maybe two for you, I would request hire a one to fundraiser and, and uh, uh, plan your resources according to uh, how much they, they, can, they can raise it. And I'm sure uh, from very, uh, all of us, we need to learn and take that stuff seriously. Uh, uh, we always kind of tell the story of the impact, whatever, whatever, but it's more critical how to build the organization. And for that, you need HR, you need a fundraiser, you need a program team, etc., etc. So I'll start giving, uh, uh, like if you ask the team, the sales guy is most important than the operation guy. Uh, 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 if they, that person doesn't bring the sale, there's no operation. So probably in each organization, if you can have those excited souls who love kind of sharing these stories and then mobilizing the resources, I think I think that will be a different way to move ahead. So we're also coaching them for all the complete examination. 
of government, state government mm -hmm. and the government. Yes, Last time I also yeah. met him and told him in the Bengaluru. Yeah. Then you are doing excellent work. Yeah. But I would suggest that as an NGO we have to start first work and then start seeing... We already started work and building it also. Yeah, I know. You have gone five steps ahead. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, slow down a little bit. It's fair enough. It's not a bad thing. And, and, and have a little bit of resource so you can have always breathing time. Otherwise, uh, like suppose we say that we'll arrange the conference and then no lunch. No. It should be. So resources are a critical part of the whole organization. So so I, I would suggest that uh, if you have to scale down, scale down, please have a proper fundraising and then and then do it. I know you all are passionate and you will you would like to reach many more people, beneficiary, etc. All the time, same should happen with us also. But a lot of time back and forth we have to go. Yeah, I'm from Center for Social Initiative and Management Bangalore. So we run a short term course for potential people who want to work, work in the social sector. We have a weekend course that we run. But you know, these two days here, I mean the amount of notes that I've made this first half of today and yesterday's field was this is just enormous. It's been a huge amount of learning that's happened. I was just wondering, I mean, how can there be accelerated learning in this space? You know, there are so many people who have come up with excellent questions, so many people sharing their experiences. So how can that whole thing be made accessible to more and more people? I mean, maybe documented, shared. Is there a platform for that as of now? This is one platform that happens once a year. But beyond that, not, I mean, whether you are doing it or anyone else is doing it, or whether there's potential to do it, uh, what is your view on this? If you go, uh, we have YouTube channels, all development dialogue. If there's some learning material, they're on the web and it will be there. But what I, I would say that, as you say, that a lot of actions are happening and live things are happening here. If you really want to experience a lot of, we are also doing, but we are very wonderful partners and, and they are doing wonderful work. And every quarter we have a partner meets, all partners come. Uh, you are more than welcome to come. You can see where you can engage, whom you use, more than that. Learning is done here. No, no, sure. I mean, as as much as as not for me as an individual, but for yeah. the larger group of people who are yeah. all over the place who want to yeah. do things on their own. How do you make all this available? So, one thing that they have to travel. <laughs> so, uh, we don't want to make learner lazy. <laughs> uh, 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 because why I'm saying that, because a lot of noises are happening in the Bangalore, Mumbai, etc., etc. And, and uh, uh, if someone is really interested, they, they have to really uh, 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 come to the water Agreed and, and taste you, it. Because if you want to see the impact of the farm pond, yeah. I don't want to show the video. I don't want to make a portal, you can see the how the water, it's a good thing to have it. But if you really want to experience and learn, just come to the water. And, and you will really see that how this made, how what happened, etc. etc. So, so we are looking for the people who really feel passionate about it and they want to go slightly deeper engagement. And this way our partner will also enjoy engaging them and have a meaningful transaction or, or mind share, heart share, whatever other things they can contribute. There is one guy called Ravi, uh, he is attending, he, uh, he, though uh, it doesn't make sense for Indian, so he brings the people from US, Canada, etc. Right, right. and have them go through all the NGOs and charge something, something. So it's a wonderful model. Uh, 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 if you want to do, we will be glad to share. Great. Uh, so it's an opportunity uh, there if you think sure. there's a gap. Yeah. Somebody wants to start something, right? We're, I think we, we can host visits. We can host sure. Because eventually sure. come up with a business model that makes sense, where, you know, yeah. to split some other revenues or something. Sure. Thank you. Something for the society, you know, they many of them have left their jobs to be with us. So instead of saying that we started this, it should say that there was a pressure from them for us to start this initiative. So now, uh, you know, they all want to act in the society either through a business or through an uh, NGO. But before starting anything on their own, they want to get empowered, get clarity of thoughts, get, uh, get their motivation strengthened. So we are looking at building an immersive learning environment where they learn concepts like leadership, sustainability. Uh, we have brought some land towards that and all that. So where the, you know about 25, 30 youth can stay with us for some time, be residential, we are also yoga practitioners. So get to know some you know, Indian principles, also know about sustainability, uh, get themselves empowered so that they can act in the society better. So we want them to know, you know what kind of funding models are available for such a initiative. How to, how to go about this. You, you want to do some transaction to organize yourself 
and then you want to grow a little bit. So it's a pretty organized process. And probably uh, those are running mechanic or you know, you know how to do it. So you need to have those elements. Otherwise, again, you will run out of the resources and, and you will be chaotic. So you need to see uh, there's no financial model, fair enough. Like they, the kids cannot pay, fair enough. Or you see there is some financial all hybrid. So that you need to decide. And after that, you build the organization. Like foundation like us can give you once, twice, thrice, next, after that. So At least to start with, the, yeah. there is some uh, platform to collaborate with uh, DF. Sure, sure. Also sure. enabled some uh, student groups to uh, you know, start off their own uh, technology based companies uh, because we are also computer science professors. Uh, that is happening, but uh, more are interested because uh, they have significant skill sets, but they see that uh, even in big organizations with a big pay, their skill sets are not getting uh, matched with what kind of work they, uh, is expected out of them. So we have good people with us, you know, thank God, we have good people with us. So, so, if you have so, uh, so we are, uh, we, uh, what, uh, the space that we envision is, uh, one is, uh, if we need to channelize these uh, high skilled people to uh, benefit the society, which is something like uh, inclusion, they, are, they already include the society in their hearts. It's just a question of concrete expression, and hence we bring in these uh, millennium uh, uh, sustainable goals, not millennium. Sustainability development goals, SDG. SDG, yes. So, uh, we are looking at the one key area is food sufficiency, uh, where uh, these high tech uh, trained plus with a heart can work at the level of uh, food sufficiency. For example, we are exploring millets, pulses, and uh, greens, which forms a completely uh, nutrition, uh, uh, full uh, uh, nutrition spectrum it takes care of. Uh, we are looking at energy sufficiency. Uh, we are looking at educational sufficiency. Uh, and also, con earth-based construction. Construction so sufficiency. It's a, it's a big so the students, uh, one, one example, I don't know if you have seen it or come across it, Vidya Nashram in Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. So they have been around for the last 30 years. So it was started by this guy who was the head of R&D for uh, Ebert. And he, when he was 50, he went off into a village and started Vidya Nashram. And it's a residential pro program. And it's been there, Kalbar. And it's been there, so they take every year, I think, 25, 30 students. And they're usually dropouts. And they're men, girls and boys. And so practical skills, you know, girls and boys all learn how to do machining, welding, all that kind of stuff. They all learn food technology, they learn business accounting, they learn agriculture and growing. And so they learn all those practical skills. And at the same time, they have a whole bunch of hands-on projects. They live there. It's a residential thing. And at the end of it, a lot of them have gone off and started businesses. That whole region now is full of small businesses that were started by them. And I think they charge some nominal amount for to cover their costs and expenses. So it's a fee-based model. OK. So yeah, it would be a good one to take over. Yeah, my name is Roy Zachukur. I'm from Laudinger. Um So my question is actually related to uh, the ecosystem you um, created in three places uh, that, that I saw in today morning's uh, uh, presentation. Basically. So the, the first one was here, and uh, one in Nanda Pradesh, rather, Pradana, and another one uh, with not. So the question is, I mean, it, it looks like a very uh, good model of projects. It's running in three places now, and I uh, assume that it is easily replicable. And the, the question actually uh, is regarding the replicability of this model. So, as you know, I mean, uh, India is a huge country, and you don't have a similar setting across the, the country anywhere. Not many, of course. I mean, there are a few pockets in here and there. But uh, in order to create such a model uh, across uh, the country, accessible to uh, many people, uh, do you have any plans of supporting people who would come forward to do something similar in their own districts and regions? Uh, and if yes, uh, to what extent does this foundation support? Uh, if someone starts from scratch, it would take another decade for them to be what you are now. Probably, if luck uh, you know comes by, yes, but uh, normally it doesn't. Uh, so practically speaking, you need some uh, some place where you can learn from others' mistake and then do something better. So that's that's where this question comes from. Engineering and management in college as an university, and also running in the rural development institute in the. Uh, within the campus for uh, Uttarakhand area 
and uh, currently we are working in education livelihood and uh, social empowerment and water and sanitation and inclusive uh, including health also and uh, we have a challenge that uh, actually we have two question for livelihood and one for education there is one uh, there is a tribal area in the remote area but uh, even the government is uh, pushing uh, many schemes for the uh, rural education but uh, there are many gaps um, uh, regarding their quality of education and their school uh, are not available if uh, the organization is uh, going to expand uh, the quality for the quality education but not as a separate school but within the government schools so uh, how can uh, df uh, will support to us as a technical or uh, or any guidance uh, from your side is uh, to uh, fulfill the gaps and uh, one is my second question there are uh, irrigated land and uh, farmers are very marginal farmer there uh, especially the disaster prone area you heard about the kedarnath yes, like yeah so there are very uh, uh, disaster prone area and uh, the farmers are very marginal and they, they have to, they do not have uh, scopes to earn much so uh, if uh, we we are trying to do something uh, including their barren land or uncultivated land to uh, grow some uh, unique crops like rose rosemary etc but they do not have market and even we are not trying to uh, search any good market for them such a uh, such a remote. remote area these are the two questions uh, we have uh, taken up a tribal development worship development and integrated farming activities in Kutpur and other districts. Unfortunately, uh, a couple of some of the tribal families situated in uh, a very jungle uh, area. So, uh, we have already implemented a number of tribal development projects. For that, we have sent a proposal by independent other families in Angel Kala. So, for that, they are asking co funding for the project. Now, nobody is asking co funding uh, for the project. They give 50 percent another admission. I sent a mail, I think the Jasna sent a mail to you. And if it is possible to co fund the project, we can be able to take up our body development program for southern families uh, residing in Angal uh, Tower. So, use this body fund to co fund. Uh, yes, you this fund and this is for personal money. So, what does it mean that we have a finite resources and second thing, limited resources? So, we have to see that from the where best we can use it. And, and other sandboxes are like we are not funding it. Some other people are funding it, like uh, for example, Telangana, Raju Reddy and uh, Parindra Sama, the two gentlemen, uh, they are funding, and the uh, East, uh, Eastern UP side, Spice Telecommunication is funding. So uh, basically, different funders. So unless until have a, you have a resource block, I would recommend to start this kind of thing. This is elephant. <coughs> You are, you are kind of up uh, uh, your home backward, you are elephant. So that's, that's elephant is expensive. So I would recommend, it looks very good, but you need a lot of resources to uh, do all the things. Unless until you have a, some resource commitment, I would recommend. It cannot run through one, like we have been working here for the last seven years. Uh, and we still we are seeing little bit of what is happening. So uh, if someone really would like to uh, do it, find the rich guy, rich corporation, rich thing, they can do it. We have enough money for this sandbox to run. So and, and we don't have any we want to see that all this impact grow, but our resources are limited for this. Uh, uh, you are doing too many activities. So I would say that uh, focus one thing. Even one thing can I both mushkil or up itna jada karne or apna ad karte jada So I would encourage if you can focus one thing that will be good. Third to your sir, uh, sir uh, we, our funding, I can tell you what we don't fund, so, so you can understand. Uh, we kind of would like to focus one activity to that organization, and we would like to work long term. We are not a, like a one year, half year, project based people. We don't go by project based. As a co-funding, etc., those are not very attractive for us, because we would like to work with the organization for longer time. Longer and focus one, and it can fail also. We have failed enough, we have no issue in that. We can we can work on it, pick up or, or whatever. You would like to see that that activity see some some light, uh, and, and it's, we don't dictate anything how it should be. It's your call whether you want to do X or Y. So uh, if you really would like to work with us, uh, you should have one activity plus you are committed to that activity. 
डोंट डू एनी एक्टिविटी फॉर नाबार्ड फॉर फाउंडेशन डोंट डू मदर्स नहीं बहुत सारे लोग प्रपोजल सिर्फ फाउंडेशन फंडिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के लिए बनाते हैं we 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 are not like we are, we, that's why in, in our hearing we never say we say we fund education health agriculture whatever whatever we, we, we are sector agnostic so don't try to fit in our shoes make your shoes fit in that and if little bit we can help you will be glad to help this is Ronika George and I'm coming from Bangalore from an NGO called Maya we're doing a rural health project uh, that's nothing to do with what I'm saying right now but uh, there are two questions i want to ask the first question is related to these kind of fund related questions where uh, what is an ideal fundraising mix uh, i mean i'm sure it's very uh, contextual to your organization but out of your experience what are good uh, a good mix of your funds to get it and uh, we i work in an ngo but all our projects are viable sustainable enterprises and they've become independent right now uh, but at the same time there are organizations like acumen united seed fund Uh, which actually put in social investments, and like the the sector itself is evolving, and we are working in NGOs. Although that that structure becomes limiting when we want to avail uh, these long-term patient investments, wherein stakeholders can actually be engaged with us for a longer period of time to see the results that may not be measurable uh, itself. So, what my question is that what is an ideal fundraising mix? and uh, what are the challenges that an ngo i mean how can the ngo overcome the challenges of getting in social investments in the organization and the last question is uh, you know everybody has uh, doomsayers in their life you know if uh, you want to do something there will be 20 people who tell you you can't yeah. and uh, with my generation or right now we are our own doomsayers so i wanted to ask both of you that What has been one experience in your life where you've been hard on yourself, and what is it that you did to get out of it to achieve what you have? So you have acumen. You need as several of the people. Uh, they want to do good, but not sure how much they'll fit. So I I wouldn't recommend to fit in anyone's. You design what you want to do. If it is sustainable model, where any user pay for it, and you can make social some business, go all these guys. Uh, uh, they'll ask you more detail, actual sheet, and and. and I'm sure if they like the fund, but if you see there's a pure, pure non-profit, just stick to it and, and build the organization in that. And fundraising is always tough. Like sales, you do it, that's tough, and you have to do every day. Uh, uh, it's not a, like a, earlier when we used to work. Uh, uh, we start writing proposal in December, January, so we have in April some money to go for one year. That's not the case. If you run, uh, you have to shut your your shop for whatever you do. So it's a it's a throughout the year, 365 days. You you have to kind of raise resources, build. It's always good to have a, a, a not from millions from one person, but millions are giving one one. That's the always best strategy. And you build your own community, you build your own people, and and luckily India a lot of people, <laughs> and lot of new wealth is getting generated. So you have to always find that this new guy or new person who is excited in your story. and how you find it and, and that will be always interesting like what is our like we decided we would like to build the ecosystem uh, 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 which is kind of based in northwest karnataka hopefully that's a plus point also because we are away from the noises minus point also because you want to create that critical mass here which is not existing so how you can have all those talent all those people or all the things get generated from this area so With us, this plus minus both go together. But we decided, fair enough. As you are feeling young, I feel further young, <laughs> and, and I want to kind of head on all, all these things, whatever we have. And we would like to further till this soil as much as we can, and and build a lot of uh, wonderful non-profit, for-profit. I say, last five years, any non-profit in India has scale. They exist in the sandbox. An example is Akshay Patel and Amitya. Their balance sheet is 200 crore plus. Agastya is 30 crore plus. to purely not profit they just ask ask us so uh, uh, by asking by donation by charity we have demonstrated that if you have a strong solution you can build a scalable solution and and there's no dearth of good heart people in this world a lot of people they want to help and there always but it's easy no one is saying easy is it tough is always always work in the process Uh, like I'm part of uh, this school, and whenever we make Excel sheet, our heart starts sinking. इतना खर्चा करना है, इतना बचा हुआ कहाँ से आएगा? But from last seven eight years is running. 
And every year when we start, it's like a, we, we, we can't see those actual sheets. <laughs> we only see expenditure. We have no idea from where the money will come. But but somehow uh, things are running, and somehow is that, that's how the, the sector has grown. And then when we share a lot of the activity, we can learn from a lot of people.